Okay, time to start with bag A. I've decided to just kind of uh, go with what's in the kit as far as the turnbuckles and uh, wait until I get some word because I can always swap stuff like that out later. Another thing is some of these ball studs and uh, whatnot are very small and it may be hard to find replacements for those. So It's not necessary, but I took a second to clean most of the flash off these parts where they're molded. It only takes a moment. It's not like they're going to interfere with anything, but it doesn't hurt. Looks nicer. Now, carbon fiber, uh, especially with these items, a lot of times will seal the edge uh, with uh, CA. And um, it's probably not a bad idea to do with these, but because it's a truck, this is gonna be under body work. So I don't think it's really necessary. Um, it's uh, still not a bad idea. Unfortunately, I'm not sure. If I have thin CA anywhere I can get to it at the moment because I am unpacking. I might, I just might have some. I've got, I've got medium zap. And I've got foam zap. And I've got a brand new bottle of Thin. Now, what we usually do with this, and I really should have a piece of plastic down here so I don't wreck my nice mat here. I'll just use one of the plastic bags. You just get a drop going and you let it soak in, kind of wick its way around. Very careful, or you will find yourself glued to the part in no time. Because one little bit of this will find its way right through. As you can see, I've already got a couple of fingerprints right there. Set that to dry over there. A 
do the same thing with the rear one and that'll make it a lot stronger um, you'd be really surprised it'll still flex a little bit but it'll reduce the amount of flex that fiberglass piece will have um, and it will uh, it'll prevent it from splitting and delaminating down the road which it could do so um, that's all good things so let's see let's start with our uh, steering blocks and we have a left and a right and they conveniently have some nomenclature for us is going to be the two longer of the ball studs the longer threaded portion let's see here i just got some new mitt tools in the other day the wrenches came in I'm guessing not let's see if one of these is the correct size dynamite also makes nice tools I love their uh, their reamers So the unfortunate thing about these uh, these kits is that almost everything on them is going to be standard, not metric. And almost everything these days is metric. Now fortunately, having built kits from way back, I still have an associated standard set from when they kind of mixed and matched where they had some some standard and some metric there we go and that was a real adventure where you know some of the nuts and bolts and allen heads would be uh, standard and some would be metric and it was kind of a guessing game. We kind of had a mixed hardware bag. And, you know, for example, I was talking about possibly um, swapping some of this hardware for uh, aluminum lock nuts cannot do these are 440s and all of the aluminum hardware that i have access to is all metric so cannot do that but uh, we will be using blue loctite and i wish i had my small bottle um, but it is packed away still maybe it's in this box next to me boxes over here sorry for all the rummaging hey that might work reduce the flow somewhat I also have this guy right here and some of those are like 
this is metric 5.55. One of these says Kyosho on it, so you know that's going to be all metric. But um, Associated used to throw these in, so you never know what's what. One of those might be an old Associated tool. Now these, I don't expect to be taking them off anytime soon, if ever. So I'm going to be liberal with the uh, Loctite because I don't want them coming loose. So it's going to be the two shorter ones. For the steering knuckles. Now we're going to use a grub screw, that's these little guys, and those are going to go in here, and those are going to anchor this little post here in that hole. So we don't need to worry about this plastic piece here as far as rotation. This is going to go through here just fine. We don't uh, we don't need to worry about whether it um, is smooth or not. There we go. But this right here. This has to be extremely smooth. And it's pretty smooth right now, but I'd like it to be like butter. Let's see if they give us a dimension on this. And they don't. That's about three millimeters. Maybe 3.5. No, it's not 3.5. Definitely not two and a half, so it's got to be the three. And it might be a standard size. So we may just need to take the three and wear it a little bit. Just take any loose, any extra material out of there. make sure the edges are smooth. There we 
go. Still a little tight. See what a difference that makes? If I hadn't reamed that out, that steering would have been a little touchy and it would have been a little sticky on one side compared to the other. And so one side might not have centered up and that would have been potentially a problem. I hate Eclipse, but you got to make use of what they give us. So. What I'm going to do is put one E-clip on to get started. God, I hate these things. Especially tough for people with big hands. Always make sure the E-clip rotates. It has to be fully seated. Otherwise it can spring off and fly off and you're screwed. So let's make sure we're facing things in the right direction. This is our left. So our steering arm needs to face that way. And our steering action is nice and smooth. Now time for our grub screw. Okay, lock tight. Now, what I recommend doing is centering the shaft so the eclipse have space above and below that way they're not touching the plastic either here or here so the shaft is free and can't isn't binding anywhere it's just riding you can get a fingernail underneath either one that way there's nothing rubbing and our steering action is as free and smooth as it can be So now we just repeat for the other side. And see, this is what I mean about taking your time and making it as clean as possible.
See, in theory, with that grub screw tightly in place, the uh, Eclipse could both fall off and the steering mechanism will be unaffected because the pin isn't going to be able to go anywhere. centering the axle of the kingpin so that the eclipse are not touching the plastic steering is perfectly smooth so two steering units left and right perfect okay suspension arms so these should have markings on them as well should I'm not seeing any That's the that's the way they fit. So at least I know I've got them in the right directions. There's nothing to anchor other than the clips. here and again let's get going with the reamer so there was some plastic flashing in there this is very tight as it passes through but it moves smooth so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit do this a lot because I, I don't want this to be a point of jiggling so there we go
small needle nose would be better for this. That's what you don't want. Now, let me explain something. When you are trying to ream out pieces to get things to be smooth, uh, for example, these two pieces here, this you can be uh, a little less careful about reaming out the material. Um, this is where you want to make sure it's um, really smooth. This one, you want to leave it a little tighter and be more judicious because the, the wider the piece, the less likely that you're going to have some kind of side to side action, uh, which you don't want. That's going to give you some kind of jiggling action, which means your uh, suspension is going to be thrown off. Um, whereas, uh, you know, all you want is a smooth rotation at this pivot point. You don't want uh, th this thing to be doing this kind of thing, up or down, left or right, or any of the above, uh, any orbiting. Um, so, because this is so small, if you take off too much material, this can potentially move around whereas because these two pivot points are further apart these even more so um, you can take a little more material off of these and have less chance of there being a problem whereas this if you take a little too much material off of this it can be catastrophic so um, but as you can see this one has just like the other one the, it's you know in the molding process there's uh, a tight spot at the exit. So we're going to make sure that is nice and clean. But not too much. Make sure it is, you know, rotates easily, but we don't have any issues. This one also, we're just going to clean it up. but we're not gonna, and it's all a matter of how much pressure you put on the tool side to side as you're pushing it in and out. will determine how much these cut. And the dynamite um, reamers are really good. The, the, um, the little uh, gouging parts here uh, are very sharp and uh, they're at opposing angles um, you get a very good result. There's, uh, I've tried a couple of different brands and they don't work nearly as well as the Dynamite. Um, these are available through various hobby stores and you can find them on Amazon, which is nice. Because if you're in a hurry, you can get them from Amazon in a couple days. and they're reasonably priced. Now you may have noticed I haven't used any lubrication on these pins. Um, 
I don't think it's really necessary with this type of plastic. There's nothing in the instructions about using lubrication. Um, it might even attack the plastic. Um, if I were going to use something on here, I would probably just use a teeny bit of this um, Protec uh, Premier White Gear Grease. Uh, it's a very good lubrication. Um, I would just rub a little bit on the uh, on the pin and um, slide it through a couple times in and out. Make sure that there was a little bit um, all the way through the hole, not enough to uh, to slow things down. But all that's really going to do is attract dust and grime, and then that's going to cause chafing, and it could uh, wear the plastic, and it could certainly cause binding. So um, I would probably just leave it dry and uh, not let it, uh, you know, cause any problems. Um, when you're at the track, bring some compressed air, like the stuff that you use to clean computers and keyboards and such, and uh, spray everything off. Use a brush to, uh, to brush off the uh, suspension. Uh, most tracks these days are using some type of uh, clay, um, they're not racing uh, on uh, real dirt anymore, or may even be racing indoors on carpet. So, uh, not something you really need to worry about as much. Okay, I think we are, yep, we're nice and dry. And this is very solid now. There's no no flex at all. It's almost as solid as uh, as carbon fiber would be. So there's some things we don't have to worry about, um, like our. Uh, We don't have any adjustability for our uh, upper connecting rod. Um, there's only one mounting hole here and one here. So we can't change that. All we can do is, uh, you know, change the um, camber, but we, uh, we can't do anything else as far as tuning that. Um, we can change the shock location upper and lower by one bolt location and that's it. Okay, three grams for the stock hardware. And if I swap for titanium and aluminum. One point six three, so almost half. Why not? If they tell me no, all I got to do is switch it. Big deal. And I'm moving it from way up high to... So that's uh, top heavy weight.
I'm guessing a couple of four millimeter spacers ought to do. In place of those uh, nut, the washer and the nuts. If I need to swap those out for three millimeters, I'll do that later. Okay, pair of ball studs. Is there any difference here? They are the same. Again, generous with the uh, with the Loctite. These things are not coming off. And that doesn't reach down there, so. This wrench fits it. Nope. There we go. titanium equivalent here. It's a little long, but is it a pass-through? Yeah. Looks like one of these escaped the box. Not of course a thread, but it should cut well. So those were M3 by 10 millimeter titanium screws. 